So as always, big welcome to everyone to our Tuesday evening. And this evening, I, I'm going to uh, share a couple of different similes of the Buddha. And the, the main topic is contentment. I want to entitle the talk, Good Enough, Two Great Words for Us in in our uh, in our striving culture so there are two factors that are at play that are working in every single meditation session that we have every every sit and in pali these words are vitaka and vichara and vitaka is the act of bringing the attention to the meditation object. And then vichara is its partner, and it's what takes over after vitaka. Vichara keeps the attention connected with the meditation object. And there's a beautiful simile in the texts to, to describe the these two factors of meditation. And as we become more skilled in our meditation and spend longer and longer of each meditation sit with the meditation object, this is because these two factors are gaining momentum, they're gaining strength, uh, vitaka and vichara. So this simile comes from uh, the questions of King Melinda. King Melinda was a, a Greco in, in Indian king in about a hundred BC. So you know, sometime after the Buddha, three or four hundred years after the Buddha. And these questions of King Melinda obviously weren't to the Buddha. He was long, uh, long gone. Uh, there are two, uh, a monk, Bonte Nagasena. Nagasena, Bonte Nagasena. <clears throat> so King Melinda asks, uh, and this is from the questions to King Melinda, chapter three, number 14. Venerable Nagasena, what is the distinguishing characteristic of sustained attention. This is the vichara part. This is the keeping it connected to the meditation object. Venerable Nagasena, what are the distinguishing characteristics of sustained attention? And the answer, the distinguishing characteristic of sustained a attention, your majesty, is continual continuity. And then, uh, this is a theme in the questions of King Melinda. King Melinda goes, can you give me an analogy? You know, can, can you flesh it out? Can you give me a simile? Just as your majesty, when a gong is struck and continues to resound afterwards, indeed, so the striking is to be understood as the applied attention. The striking is this vitaka applying the attention to the meditation object and the continuance of the resounding as the sustained attention, as the vichara part. And then all of these interactions between King Melinda and Venerable Nagasena end with, you are clever, Venerable Nagasena. So a very beautiful simile of of what is happening in our meditation this vitaka coming you know bringing the attention to the meditation object or if if you want you can think of it the other way you can think of bringing the meditation object to the attention whichever way you experience it and then the staying staying connected to the meditation object is this uh vichara it's the it's the after the gong is struck, then the gong continues to reverberate. For, for 
a certain length of time. And then as the attention starts to wane or fall off the meditation object, then the vitaka has to come into play again. You know, you strike again. And uh, this is what we're doing. <clears throat> There's a, another simile. It's not from the canon, but I've heard meditation teachers speak about it. And it's where they they use a, a garden hose, the idea of a garden hose, to uh, illustrate this, this phenomena that is happening while we meditate. And the uh, power of the mind, the, the power of the attention, would be the water traveling through the hose. And we've all had that experience with those hoses that... <laughs> you know, they've got all these holes in it. And then the power of the water is greatly affected. You know, it's like at the end of the hose. We've all had that experience. Turn it on. It is on. Well, <laughs> um, so if there are no holes in this, in this hose, the attention, the power of the mind becomes extremely strong. And and the suttas talk about it. It becomes penit penit. I have hard time with that word. Penit penetrative. Penit penetrative. <laughs> penetrative. Yeah, that it it can actually you know even cut cut through our ignorance and our delusion. So these holes in this hose, in 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 each one of our holes hoses the holes the the buddha says you know the the main holes are our craving and our delusion uh, our craving and our aversion these are the these are the things that where um our attention is diverted our attention is distracted our attention the power of our attention is dissipating and leaking out These, these two forces of craving and aversion. And aversion really is the flip side of craving. Uh, aversion really is wanting something else, wanting something different. Not wanting this is it can be expressed in wanting it otherwise, wanting something different. So these two forces... Um, and I, I'm going to read a, another sutta, a very beautiful sutta, where it's uh, Devata having a conversation with the Buddha. And the Devata is asking the Buddha, the Devata is it's a deva, and so there are these different realms. And once someone has a stronger meditation, um, power uh, and 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 more power in the mind. You, we will see some some beings because some devas are not very far from from the earth realm. So, at Savati, standing to one side, that devata recited this verse in the presence of the Buddha. This is from the beginning of the connected discourses, uh, the first book. And it's sutta number 10. And this deva asks the Buddha, he, the deva is not understanding something. He says to the Buddha, those who dwell deep in the forest, living in the wilderness, peaceful spiritual practitioners eat just one meal a day. So why is their complexion so serene? The deva doesn't get it. They're, they're living deep in the forest, they're in the wilderness, and they're eating one meal a day, and yet they, they look grand, you know, they look fabulous and very well nourished. And the Buddha answers, they do not grieve, this is the aversion, over the past, nor do they long for the future, this is the craving. They feed themselves 
on whatever comes that day. So just this one meal a day, and they're, they're alms mendicants, they're dependent on people feeding them. So they're, they're not grieving for the past, and they're not longing for the future, and they just feed on what's here right now in the present. They just feed on whatever comes that day. That's why their complexion is so serene. Through longing for the future and through grieving over the past, fools dry up and wither away like a green reed mowed down. And it's the second simile for tonight. So through, through longing for the future and through grieving over the past, fools dry up and wither away like a green reed cut down. So these are, these are the holes in, in our, our attention hose. It's, it's a, a, an aversion, a grieving over the past, and then a longing for the future. And just to unpack craving a little bit, and then this power, this force in each of our minds, this wanting, it is, it is baked in delusion. And we, we've all, we all have really bought in, I mean, all of us, that somehow, if something changes in some way, I'll be ever so slightly happier. Like, like we, we operate from this mindset. We're always, you know, my most recent partner, you know, before I became a nun, um, we did a lot of, a lot of sense pleasure and it was always, we had, and now what's the next fun thing? You know, we were always like the next, the next, the next, the next fun thing. Um, just sort of saturating ourselves in the next fun thing. But we, 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 this is very deep in our hearts that we somehow think like, just when I get this finished, you know, I'm going to feel so good. We can operate our whole lives that way. You know, when I, <laughs> I remember at high school, just when I get this darn essay finished, you know, and hand it in. And then, you know, when I graduate and when I get move out and then when I get to university and then, and then when I'm with, I was a music student, you know, and then when I'm with all music students and I'm with like-minded people, it'll be so fun and on and on and on. And then when I meet that special someone, you know, and then, well, then when I have, you know, when, when we finally, finally proposes and we get married and then it, it blah, 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 blah. And then we have the kids and, and then, and then you have the kids, it's like when the kids get school age, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> eventually it's so when the kids move out <laughs> and then they move back in you know? and then honestly they move out and then you want them to move back in like it just we're always wanting like over there I, I remember that this really really coming home to me when I finally started meditating and it was so hard you know so hard at first and I can remember I was at Birkin and we were sitting and it was just so quiet. Everyone was completely quiet. So I felt like I couldn't shift. And in my head, I'm like, as soon as the bell rings, I'll be so happy. <laughs> and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, no, like when the bell rings, not a lot's going to change. You know, I'll still be me. I'll still have my mind. I'll still have my body. I'll still, it, 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 but we it's wonderful if we start to really see how much we've we really have bought into this this next next thing you know um even in meditation sometimes i notice i'm leaning forward you know like the the next breath the net you know waiting 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 wanting 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 uh, very strong force in in all of our minds, and it's it is really rooted in this delusion. And it's great if we start to see it and start to 
stop believing it, you know, just, just notice it when it's there and really see it for what it is and, and, uh, stop believing it as strongly. Every, every bit that we can chip away is so useful, so helpful uh, f for every part of our lives. So the thing that we can actively do uh, to, to counter this force and to really, you know, more and more kindly set ourselves up for success is to consciously turn our mind, turn our attention to contentment and start to really counter things with contentment. And I'm not talking about this positive thinking um, veneer that we spread over um, our, our pain or our disappointments. I'm talking about genuinely starting to cultivate actively, consciously, more and more of a, of a mindset, a, a heart tone of contentment. Um, and, and there, there are many ways to do this, but I think the start is to really buy in, really start to value it, really start to see its, um, its worth. And, and the Buddha really speaks a lot about contentment. And, and in the suttas is actually quite a strong precur precursor to us sitting down and 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 formally trying to train our minds and formally meditate but we can do we can do them in tandem and then we can start to try and even lead in our meditation with contentment and there there are some ways to do this and these two words good enough are extremely useful and it's not a message that we we're getting in our culture at all, because good enough does not fuel capitalism. You know, it's really the the antithesis. Like my clothes are good enough. You know, my glasses are good enough. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, fashion would have us changing our glasses all the time. You know, oh, they're not they're too small now. I need to get bigger one. Then uh, no, they're too big. I need to get smaller ones. You know, wrong shape. You know blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's just one item. It goes on and on and on. Um, but the more that uh, we start to culti cultivate contentment with this idea of, of good enough, because the, the Buddha says that, that it's um, when we have fewness of wishes, this is something that's greatly praised in the, in the suttas. And the Buddha even says it's an amazing blessing for us if we're getting to hear talk about contentment so this is something that we can do for one another talk more and more about being content being content with our bodies the way they are you know like good enough uh, being content with the, the the weather being content with um all of it like making peace with it and 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 realize it's it's good enough for the most part it's good enough uh we don't you know i i i remember noticing this as a as a child my my best friend lived across the street and his father was an electrician and my dad my dad couldn't my dad couldn't hammer in a nail bless his heart he seriously he couldn't screw in a screw i mean from a young age, I was doing all that stuff around our house. Um, he just, he just couldn't. And, but my friend's father was an electrician and they were super into house renos. And I remember noticing as a child, I was kind of envious, you know, like, wow, it's so cool, you know, and there, but then I noticed that's, that's just wacky. Like they would reno a room and then do another room and then another room. And within my childhood, they had done the whole house and were back to the room that I remember them doing first mm -hmm. and starting over because now it was like 12 years old, you know, and they're going to redo like it, we did, but we do this. We just, 
are constantly um, being dissatisfied is it, it it takes it takes more energy to to work on the the being content and be and being satisfied but it's such a worth worthwhile endeavor and, and we can help one another really be encouraging one another N not you know this unempathetic listening like you know <laughs> Brene Brown has a really good short clip on YouTube about, uh, I think it's about empathy. And like, it, we need we need to also have empathy. So if someone is actually struggling, this is this is also important. I mean, I don't need to. The Buddha's teachings are nuanced, right? And and you talk about contentment, it doesn't negate all the other things. Brene Brown's thing that this is this is not empathy and this is not contentment and this poor woman you know she's like had a miscarriage and then the listener's like well at least you know you can get pregnant you know i'm not talking about being like that <laughs> uh we want to be human we want to have empathy um but we also really want to be encouraging someone in in all of us in encountering all of the you know the uh out of control craving that that's in all of our lives and and one one antidote one thing to counter it with is contentment and uh really really starting to value it because when we become content then uh the mind doesn't the mind is happy to stay still the mind is happy to stay in the present because it's good enough and the and the grieving over the past and being pulled out into the past and being pulled out into the future is is abated somewhat and and this cultivating contentment like literally as as we're meditating like this this breath is beautiful just as it is it's good enough it counters so many things of uh, the, yeah, the running into the past and running into the future, but also the the doing the, and the controlling. You, you, we just relax and and good enough. It's okay. It's okay just the way it is. My body's okay the way it is. Uh, it it it's good enough. And um, this really brings into play a lot of the fundamental aspects of the buddha's teaching you know that uh when we start to be um okay with things the way they are we're, we're chipping away at our craving we're chipping away at our aversion um, this is very it's very good practice uh and and we're also putting in very good causes and conditions and 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 we're we're creating conditions for a a a, a wonderful feedback loop that, that when when you're 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 like trying to bring in contentment you're chipping away at at the craving and the aversion and which the buddha tells us is is the source the cause of our discontent the cause of our dis-ease the cause of our suffering and uh we're we're enacting a virtuous cycle um just 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 circling back to this beautiful sutta where the the buddha is explaining to the to the deva that um when we're when when we're we're content and we're just here right here right now with this breath not running off into the future not running off into the past what happens is that we feed on whatever's there that it starts to become nourishing to us and and then this is true you know when we're really present uh there's something incredibly satisfying and nourishing to 
to the body, to the heart, to the mind. Think about times when you're really present, you know, when when you're having a conversation with someone and it starts to be like really connected, like, yeah, yeah, that that happened to me too, you know, and then and then you feel seen and heard and and you're just there, right there with that conversation. Uh, it becomes very nourishing. When we're present, it's very nourishing. I think that this is one of the draws to uh, to to rock climbing. I really do. You know, the it, I, I'm I feel like that's what I see in my son is when he talks about some of his climbs, it's almost like talking about really good meditation. You know, the stakes are high and your safety is at stake. And and so you're incredibly present. It's and this is beautiful. It's so alivening and nourishing. And so when when we're leading in our meditation actively with with thinking about contentment and bringing contentment up uh then then it, it start then the mind starts to be happy enough in the present moment and then it 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 starts to you know be this really reinforcing feedback loop of then and then it it's easier to stay right there right with that breath and then it it, it, and then there's some momentum and and this really is so many of the principles that the buddha lays out for us about how our minds work and where our suffering comes from and what we can be actively doing to um to to um disentangle from it and and to 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 pull it apart and and to really uh, become healthier, you know, really nourish ourselves, uh, nourish ourselves with the present moment. You know, Ajahn Chah, he's, uh, sorry, Ajahn Brahm. He, we've got all these little sayings, and he's got this great one: if you, if you want to be happy, or if you want to be happier, lower your expectations. <laughs> This is very good advice, you know, and this is how the Buddha, this is counter, right? We think if I get what I want, this will satisfy the wanting. No, if you start peeling away, picking away at the wanting, this actually will, will lead to greater happiness. Lower your expectations, fewness of wishes, easily satisfied. It's in the Metta Sutta you know, contented and easily satisfied, being easily satisfied. Thanks. No, that's good enough. It's great. You know, fine. It's fine. It's fine. I don't need it like three degrees warmer. I don't need it, you know, two degrees cooler. It's okay. I'll I'll put a sweater on or I'll, I'll take my sweater off, you know, like it's fine. It's okay. There's a great song. I, I quote it all the time. Cheryl Crow. Soak up the sun. Scott, you must know it, right? There's this awesome line in it. Um, it's not getting what you want. It's wanting what you've got. This is a secret to contentment. So much wisdom in in that line. And something that we can all really, really take to heart. Um, it, it will benefit us greatly. It's not getting what you want. This is what we this is the bill of goods we've been being sold our entire lives. And we've all tried it. It's a strategy we've sort of all operated from. I just get what I want, you know. It's not getting what you want. It's just it's just wanting what you've got right here, right now, good enough. It's like two of my favorite words. You know, it's good enough. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, this will be, this will be deeply nourishing for us, and our complexions, our complexions will become mm-hmm. serene. And then the devas will be saying, "Hey, that's amazing! Did you see that group in Canmore? <laughs> you know, it's not like they've got, you know, yeah, yeah. So may it be so. 
for each and every one of us. Yeah, so I'll end there and plenty of time for questions and sharing, feedback. I'd like to um, make one comment just for, yeah, because I've had people in the past when we've talked about this who who are more sort of black and white people or they see things in black and white and they want to be good Buddhists and then they feel guilty if they want something. <laughs> so, of course, if you're living a lay life, it's part of lay life you know you you have to have a job you have you know you have to support yourself and so you're going to need things you're going to want you know want to have various things and and that's just part of lay life but the main thing is say your your old car breaks down for the last time and you you you, you need to get a new car so you want a new car um but as i is saying you you don't want to say, I can't be happy until I get that mm -hmm. new car. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need a new car to, you know, drive the kids around to their games and <laughs> get the groceries and all that stuff. So you put your you put your conditions in place to, you know, save the money up or whatever to get that car, but you don't pin your happiness on getting it. You're like right here, right now, you're content and and be able to be happy in this moment you know, while you're waiting mm -hmm. for the conditions mm -hmm. to manifest. But anyway, I just, I've just had a few, uh, several people in the past who get this, you start feeling guilty if they want something. So I just wanted to make that clear. That's yeah. very clear. Thank you. Yeah. Ronnie, please. Um, would be watching this, these, uh, this YouTube channel, this guy in the, in the, West des Desert in Texas trying to build a forest. So he's got all these techniques and he's trying to build the landscape. And I'm thinking, well, he's always got to look into the future. How am I going to do this? Oh, this failed, but I got to do this. You, you know, so it's kind of like, I I get the like my analogy for when people say what's on your bucket list and I always say what I've already done. Because, yeah, that's great. Because it's just impossible. Yeah, like, I'm not going to get up Everest. Get real. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like oh, I got a bourgeois or whatever I did. Good. <laughs> you know, it's like it's beautiful. But when it comes to those things like those planning events. I don't know how you can be content. Like, you know, at one point he spread 350 kinds of seeds or seeds in this one project and not, not one germinated. It's like, how do you... I mean, I get what you're saying, but in reality, I can fix. Well, I think, I, I mean, he understands. I'm sure he understands what he's working with. You know, of course we're planning, of course. But the thing is, it it's the it's the are you pinning all your hopes on it? Or are you uh and and when we're planning, I think it's important to understand that I'm but I'm right here in in the present, planning for something in the future and, and not like just being lost in the future. And uh when you take on a project. Uh, the project it, is, it is the future. The project is having, for this guy, having a forest in an area that's just, he's trying to change the climate. It's like, holy shit, talk about putting your money where your mouth is. Well, more power to him, but I'm, I'm sure he knows what, I'm sure. Um. I mean that that just is the way. I at the monastery I lived at in in Ontario, we planted I think six hundred trees. Um, I think there's a couple of them left. <laughs> yeah, and we were oh we worked so hard and watering, watering, watering. You know, it's good. You know, we tried, and there's a couple of trees. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, but you, you, 
I mean, other people that have, yeah. He's having more success than you guys do. <laughs> it's no good. There. It's like, good. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. Caleb. What are the practical things that we foster contentment? I think with working with um, the uh, working with the delusion that if I get what I want, then I'll be happy. Like seeing that over and over and over when we're when we're doing it, and 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 it can be very little, right? We, I lived my entire life, Caleb. Like I was, I, I you know every single day, like I get up. Cause then I get to have a cup of coffee. Like everything was always tied to some little reward, you know, and then I go to work and then I get to, you know, watch TV. Like I, everything was like, I, I, the only way I could motivate myself to work hard was with my little rewards, my little, the, and, and so just seeing, I think seeing how much we were thinking that this is going, this is going to work and be happy starting to disentangle from that and um and then i think another one is the um well that takes a lot of power out of uh out of that that losing proposition i think the other thing is uh, it's sort of slipping away from me uh to at times, Caleb, actually be with the discomfort of wanting. Like actually just uh, experience what craving feels like. It's it's it it's there's parts of it that are uncomfortable. A craving's a hard one. Be, like aversion, it's so clear this is unpleasant craving is so much delusion in it and there is there is this there is this initial enjoyment initial hit you know but to really understand that's it's just enjoyment it's just pleasant it's not like the meaning of life it's not ultimately sat, you know fully satisfying it's just pleasant sense contact and and to enjoy that, but but to not hang so much on it, and then and then I think reducing our wanting. I, I mean, it, th this is great. There are many movements doing this, right? Minimalists and tiny houses, and uh, and all kinds of people in fashion working towards you know helping people reduce their wardrobe and, and increase the quality. And this is really good for the planet, like so good for the planet. Uh, so actively reducing our wanting. And, it, and, and the Buddha talks about there's, there is, there really is this, this deep satisfaction in simplicity and, uh, and fewness of wishes and, um renunciation that and you 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 feel this like you you go on a meditation retreat you know and just have two or three days of of silence and it's amazing you end up like wow this is wild i feel so happy you know because there's this real nourishment in in reducing keeping things simple yeah, and another thing you can get is the the um all the effort that's involved. Yeah, to yeah. Get good, good things. Yeah. Um, I have a neighbor a couple of doors down who who has a a big huge motorboat, <laughs> and he was he's got a couple of little you know young children, and um, and he was just telling me he, he, how much work it was to get this boat to the lake and and, and all all the whatever i've never had a, a boat like that so i don't know but anyway he, he was bemoaning <laughs> all the effort it took <laughs> to set this boat up and get it in the water and then what he had to do when he took it out or whatever 
um yeah so <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's interesting. I am on the Michelle's bucket list for today. I was thinking my bucket list is diminishing, not because I'm checking off or I've done everything, but realizing I don't need to do them. <laughs> you know, what's the point? But what do I want out of it? And it just, it just struck me. I, yeah, it's easier maybe for me because I've done a lot. <laughs> and people here are a lot younger and you're going through the phase mm -hmm. of family and working and things like that. but. It just yeah, it just struck me. Yeah, it's diminishing. It's getting less and less. Scott and then Ellen. Um, I noticed on the website that you're giving a talk next Thursday night in Calgary. Can you tell us what the topic is? Um, it's on becoming your own best friend. So is it similar to the one that's on our YouTube channel? It's a little bit. Yeah, but better be better <laughs> except it won't be recorded so there is one recorded by Aya that's that was done a month or so ago it's mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel no it's long it's oh, super old I was in a local Bihara when I gave that talk Ellen are there any teachings around contentment and giving to others, because I often find, like, what's this? So, I guess here's here's an example. I bought some clothes for my children because they had worn their stuff out, and I knew that one of my kids would really like certain styles of stuff. And so, you know, I try to buy things that I think they'll like and that kind of stuff. And it comes, and then Hazel is just wearing the shirt, and she's so happy, and she beams up a smile at me, and she goes, did you buy this for me? And I go, yeah, I did. And then right at that moment, I'm like, that's the dopamine hit I was looking for <laughs> when I was buying this stuff, right? I knew that they would be, like, and I didn't even quite identify at the time and then upon delivery <laughs> I was like all right there it is um, <laughs> it was great but, great awareness no Ellen for sure general um someone asked Beth in the group interview today about cultivating joy and they said a couple of things that they were doing and then Beth's first thing was generosity there's a lot of joy in generosity and and joy and contentment definitely related definitely no it's beautiful no this is beautiful this is very very wholesome yeah. very yeah so my heart's listening to that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily want to cultivate that through things through uh, giving people like yeah like, but at times yeah, it's generosity. It's more complicated than I would ever think of it to be if it wasn't my kids. If I wasn't trying to raise humans, I wouldn't give this a second thought. But it's the context that obviously when you overthink everything, I guess. But wonderful awareness. And, and, and uh, I shouldn't look back at like a no 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 that that's 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 uh no that's like contentment or joy coming from your own thoughtfulness and awareness of how your children are being attuned to them and and um and your generosity yeah yeah this this, this is lovely yeah yeah. Yeah. It's so rare. Oh, how we live such joy. Yeah. <laughs> well, she never, they never get me. Yeah. <laughs> I always give them the empty downs, but it's, they tear holes in them so fast. <laughs> yeah. And even that, you know, it, it, I think is very special. Um, yeah. That, uh, 
it, it was the same, right? You know, I was extremely poor when my kids were little and they, so, but I feel like there was great benefit for them because then when they did get something, they really knew how special it was. And, um, and they took such good care of their stuff, you know? Yeah, it was many good qualities I felt like. Yeah. So even that, honestly, I think it's great. Your kids don't get tons of new clothes. And then when they do, it's very special. Oh, for sure. But it kind of, I guess, maybe we're actually moving away from the original question. It would be the same, like the question was more around giving things to others because you know it's gonna make like suddenly realizing that you gave it to them as much to make them feel you to feel good as to make them feel good this is a hundred percent fine yes that's that yeah that's really clear in the buddha's teachings that we're actually supposed to reflect on our generosity and we this is even something we can do when we're down like oof something you know is hard this is this is a particular meditation to 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 uplift the mind and and to and to feed contentment yeah this is it the buddha wants us to be virtuous but then to really enjoy our virtue and in, with generosity, there's passages where the Buddha talks about that you can bring up a lot of joy thinking about, oh, you know what, I'm going to make X, Y, and Z for so-and-so because I know they'll really like it. Even the planning of it is a place where we can get, ha get happy. And then when we give it, and then remembering like and and to do it often it it's so like it it's very different than so some other teachings but it's so wholesome that we're supposed to really really be into how good we are <laughs> super be jazzed by it it's so great and then and then see the wholesomeness in one another and reflect it to them encourage them with it you know, yeah. You're teaching your kids how to give too. You know, you all of it. Like yeah, that. yeah, With totally. They see how it's like, oh, that's the right response. And they be happy about giving it to somebody else or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like, oh, it's yeah. just wonderful. Absolutely. I feel like kids are naturally good at giving. They are. They you are. So much art you start to grab. <laughs> kids so i know i know it, it it there's when you're around children you see how there's, yeah there's so much goodness very naturally very very often incredibly empathetic attuned yeah beautiful great question ellen because yeah yeah Okay, we're at we're definitely at time. Okay, what we go here? We're gonna do compassion. Okay, we're in the second week of the month. Is that where's the hook? It's probably in here, on top of yep. Yeah, because we move this. That's why. Anyway. Thank you, Sam. Karuna, compassion. So first of all, bring to mind someone you know who has great physical or mental suffering. And while being aware of their particular difficulties, direct these compassionate phrases to them. May you be free of your pain and sorrow. May you find peace. Now bring to mind someone who's been very supportive of you and send the phrases to them. May you be free of your pain and sorrow. May you find peace. Now bring to mind a neutral person 
someone you pass on the street or a clerk in the store and send the phrases to them. May you be free of your pain and sorrow. May you find peace. And now bring to mind someone that you have a difficult relationship with and send the phrases to them. May you too be free of your pain and sorrow. May you too find peace. May all beings be free of pain and sorrow. May all beings find peace. Remember that all beings face great potential suffering, no matter how fortunate their immediate circumstances may be. This meditation does not eliminate suffering. What we are doing is being able to acknowledge suffering, to open to it and respond to it with a tenderness of heart, which allows us to join with all beings and realize we are never alone. May the merit of our practice be shared with all beings, named and unnamed. Beings that are alive. May all beings be well and happy.